Just what is David Stern's vision for the New York Mets bullpen? Let's talk about that. And well, 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 welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media. I'm watching K99. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to watch these videos. Quick reminder, we go live every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Come on in, join the fun. We always have a great time. Uh, but today, I want to talk a little New York Mets baseball. Now, the Mets, so far uh, this offseason, have been making a lot of one-year signings, particularly for the pitching staff. Luis Severino got one year. Uh, they've, they've acquired you know a couple of uh, position players with invites to spring training. But what we've really seen is the Mets signing a lot of potential arms for this bullpen to minor league deals or split contracts where they can go between the majors and the minors and a lot of Mets fans are showing an incredible lack of patience wondering if we're shopping in the in the bargain basement a Dollar Tree or the Will Ponds back just all kinds of absolute nonsense in my mind so let's look a little bit deeper at these signings and try to get a sense of what uh, David Stearns is trying to do with this Mets bullpen and what the Mets really do need going forward so their most recent signing was Jorge Lopez to a one-year two million dollar major league contract now Lopez had a very rough 2020 had an ERA near six over five, over 59 innings and floated between three different teams. But he did average almost 97 miles an hour on his sinker and about 84 miles an hour on his breaking ball. And in 2022, that sinker was about 97 miles an hour as well. So he hasn't been losing any velocity. And I say that because in 2022, Jorge Lopez was one of the best relievers in baseball. He was pretty close up there with Edwin Diaz. He had a 2.54 ERA, including a 1.68 ERA in the first half. His whip was 1.18, which is pretty good. He averaged a strikeout uh, per inning, made the all-star team. So what was the real difference? If it wasn't velocity, what was the difference from 2022 to 2023? Well, he used the sinker a lot less in 2023. He used it about 50, 55% of the time in 2022, went down about 33% of the time in 2023. So maybe he felt he couldn't control it all that well, and he started using the straight fastball, the four-seamer, a little bit more often, and uh, batters were just able to square it up because you know they expected to see the fastball because he knew he wasn't throwing the sinker as much. So I think that was an issue. But again, one year, $2 million. I'll sign anybody for one year, $2 million. But what we're seeing here, as we look at these other pitchers the Mets have signed, they're really looking at pitchers who may not have been very good last year, but in recent times have had a very good season and have a distinctively good pitch. We look at, for instance, Austin Adams, who has a split contract with the majors and the minors. It's all about a very good slider and how well he spins it. His slider really has a lot of movement on it. He just has to control it. Michael Tonkin signed for $1 million also on a split deal. Very, very good control. He could pitch multiple innings. I think best case scenario, Tonkin becomes what Trevor Williams was, that innings eater. Okay, Cole Sulcer on a minor league deal. A 2.70 ERA in 2021 has a very good changeup. Kyle Crick, a little older, 31 years old, also has a very good hard spinning slider, a 3.5 career ERA. Andre Scrub, minor league deal, but he had a 1.90 ERA in the majors in 2020, has a good 12 to 6 curveball. And now you add Lopez on the only major league deal of those six pitchers. So very, very little risk. So when you look at the Mets bullpen right now, you really have four spots locked in. Edwin Diaz, Brooks Raley, Drew Smith, and Jorge Lopez. You really need at least three more pitchers to step in, possibly even four for opening day. And of course, you'll need a few more when there's injuries or when somebody's game goes to hell. You know, maybe two of these under the radar signings can make it. And, we've, and we know very well, as a, if you're a baseball fan, you know you want some pitchers who have roster flexibility where they can be sent down or called up uh, when needed. You have that with guys like Austin Adams and Michael Tonkin. Now, I guess what I'm really feeling that the Mets are missing is an eighth inning reliever. Now, if they were to just bring back David Robert, Robertson, I'd be okay with it. 
He is 39 years old, but he loved being a Met, and he did a great job for them before he was traded to Miami. Now, who else is out there? Well, Robert Stevenson is somebody I've talked about on this channel in the past. I like him a lot. He, last year, he had a 2.35 ERA, a 0.68 whip, which is just sick, and a 14 strikeouts per nine inning in 42 appearances with Tampa Bay. Maybe a Phil uh, Maiden from Houston or uh, Matten, sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, who uh, batters, you know, really, they don't really hit him hard. Like If you get into exit velocity, if you're into that, he has one of the best exit velocities for a pitcher. Uh, last season. He's like in the 98 percentile. Really, really good. There's other guys like Hector Neris, Michael Fulmer, Liam Hendricks. I think they're a tier down for me, though. Uh, maybe just bring in a Brent Suter from Milwaukee as that second lefty. Uh, I don't think Jordan Hicks comes. There's a lot of teams interested in him that'll give him three or four years. I don't see the Mets giving uh, like a four-year contract to a reliever. Uh, forget Josh Hader. He's going to be a closer. I don't think he's ever coming to the Mets. But I look at what David Stearns has done in the past with his bullpens when he was in Milwaukee going back to 2017. And the numbers are quite impressive. Now, when you have Josh Hader and Devin Williams, yes, your bullpen numbers are going to look pretty darn good. But since 2017, so 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So over those, and 23. So over those, uh, well, he really wasn't with the Brewers last year. So six years. Just look at the six years. They were in the top 11 in bullpen ERA every year except 2019, and every year they have a very high strikeout rate. They're almost always in the top five in bullpen strikeout rate. That's really important, whereas the Mets are seemingly always in the 20s in bullpen ERA. So since 2017, the Mets' bullpen ERA has ranked in Major League Baseball 29th, 28th, 26th, 18th, 9th, 10th, and then last year 22nd. Okay, so it was a little bit better when Edwin Diaz was on, but for the most part, the Mets have had a bullpen that has just really, really struggled. But we see here with the Milwaukee bullpen, Stearns really values strikeouts. He's looking for pitchers who are capable of getting a quick out and getting out of jams. And when you're holding on to a lead, okay, or, you know, trying to stay within, you know, trying to hold that other team off, or if you're trailing in, say, the eighth inning and the other team has a runner on, you got to bring a pitcher in, and you're trying to keep the game at 3-2 instead of it getting to 4-2 or 5-2, you need a pitcher who can get that strikeout and, you know, not, not have the batter put the ball in play. So all those things really help. And another thing with the Mets, last year they had one of the uh, softest throwing bullpens out there, and they're trying to add velocity. Certainly Edwin Diaz coming back will help. But I think what we're seeing with Stearns, and he really described this in one of his press conferences, he's not looking for just a bunch of flamethrowers. He wants a diverse bullpen. He wants hard throwers, soft throwers, a variety of arm slots, a, a variety of pitch arsenals, and that's what he's really, really looking for. So I think the Mets uh, definitely have one more reliever that they have to sign. I hope it's that bridge pitcher to Edwin Diaz. Let's see who it is. Let's see who that is, and uh, please get Yoshinobu Yamamoto in the starting rotation. Let's go. All right, well, those are my thoughts on the Mets bullpen. If you have some thoughts, I'd like to see them right down there in the comments. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you once I'm back in.